Today on the program we are making a hoppy hellas. So basically it's a hellas grain bill with a lager yeast. We're using the Imperial Urkel strain today. And a quick note on that, it's a few months old and I'm not seeing this sort of foam up or have a croisin like they sometimes do. But I guess I have no reason to think that it's too old or not going to work so we're just gonna give it a try and uh i think i've seen some of them like this but hopefully we'll start fermenting um normally hellas is not about the hops it's about the malt but uh i made a session india pale lager recently which you might have seen and that was a no boil hop edition beer four ounces post boil it had a little bit of bitterness but I thought it could maybe have a little bit more. So this beer is essentially about the same thing. Um, I think that one was maybe also like, I mean, it's gonna be very similar on gravity, also a lager. So I'm gonna do a small boil addition that'll give it 20 plus IBUs according to a calculator. So whatever the session IPL had this beer will have similar IBUs, but um, with uh, you know extra boost. So uh, it's kind of like I don't know, whatever, adding a hop shot or just giving it a little boost. Um, using the Zambas, which are a BSG hop blend. I don't have the description of this blend off the top of my head, so I'll have to go over that later, probably in the tasting notes. But it sounded like it could be a fun one for a hoppy beer like this. Otherwise, pretty simple. This is my typical Hellas grain bill, which you can see right there. I'm going to do 0.75 ounce at boil, and then I'll do two ounce after the boil, let it sit, and then another two ounce. Um, gravity's looking good so far um, from doing the work collection last night. I got to wake up here and uh, get out to the garage and see if we're about to boil. So real quick, here is 21 grams of the Zamba, and I am about to bring this out to the garage. So right now the temp, I didn't take it, but usually it's about like 130 or so. So, I mean, this is a little bit like a first wort hop. I'm going to bring this out to the garage and bring it to the boil. And uh, so yes, this beer will have some minor bit of bittering addition as far as the hops go. Thought it might be fun to do a quick survey of the St. Paul winter scene around here. This is my snow pile right here that I pile up snow and I'm shoveling and then this is where I scoop it into some buckets and that helps with my ice bath. But this is a pretty good pile and uh, yeah we just got a decent amount of snow this year. We're running a little above average so they say. Um, snow all around. There's my bike tires, I'm still biking every day. Compost just gets all frozen this time of year, but I keep putting stuff in there and dried leaves and it'll start going again in the spring. Here's a pretty good snow pile from uh, clearing out this area behind the garage. There's another pile down there. And yeah, you just aim your car down the middle and uh, it's kind of like Bumper cars? No. Tobogganing? What's that thing? Luge? Bobsled. That's what I was trying to say. But yeah, you just uh, hopefully get to where you're going. But the uh, boil is running along. Almost time to add, put the uh, work chiller in. And then after that, we'll be doing the hop stand. So it has been an hour and I sure hope that's gonna work. I just like to see a little croisin and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So what we're gonna do is kill the heat, add in two ounces, and it should get some bitterness from these. 
Alright, let's see. Here we go. Okay. Probably don't need that going. So, yeah, we're just gonna hop stand it up and give it a good dose. Alright, it's been 15 minutes. And we need to add the second dose of two more ounces. And we'll give it another 15 minutes. I thought about taking the temperature to see how much it had cooled down, but uh, I'm not going to do anything extra to cool it down, and hopefully it's down to this range of about 180-ish. Um, that is said to extract less bitterness. So I maybe I'll go grab the thermometer quick. So I'm looking at this. It says uh, 186 is what it says. So we're going to call that good enough. I mean, in a few more minutes, it'll be down closer to the 180. In fact, I had the door shut. I might just leave the door open and let it cool down even more. So here we go, it's gonna be in the low 1050s. I gave this yeast a smell, and it definitely smells very yeasty and fresh and like you would want it to, so we'll all give her a shot. We got five gallons, just under. Actually, this will probably bring it up to five gallons. And because it's a lager, I definitely am gonna do some pure oxygen aeration which I sort of was starting to skip doing this um, summer with sort of average gravity beers because I pour it into there and I found that even if I didn't do a starter and didn't do the uh, pure oxygen it would still ferment fine and so it was kind of fun just to take a little uh, break. You know here's a little <laughs> basement scene here. The mountain bike's in get, gonna get new tires. Another commuter bike with studded tires needs a new cassette. The best bike here is on the left. I gave that a wash and then the road summer bike is there on the right so you know you got bikes everywhere but that's what we do. So I'm gonna get this all buttoned up, aerated and plenty of choices to ferment it in this basement with um, temperatures of ranging from low to mid 40s to you know up from there so we'll get her all buttoned up get her going remember in those clips when I was speculating about the health of the yeast well uh, it smelled totally fine and I pitched it but I didn't really see much activity in the starter and then it was cold the wort was 46 to 48 and nothing was happening for the first day and then into the second day so it had been 24 hours and then into the next morning and just nothing was really happening and then I at some point I realized it was uh, below the recommended temperature range for Urkel which is 52 Fahrenheit or above so then I brought it upstairs on the end of the second day beginning of the third day I don't know let me think uh, Monday yesterday so uh, it was the 48 hours after brewing I brought it upstairs it warmed up I came down this morning so it's the third day after brewing and I am seeing this and it had none of this it was just the um, clear top of the wort and I just thought this is just not what I want to be seeing in this beer that I want to turn out so it was 60 um, I don't know why it did get warmer my house is a little bit warmer than that um, but this basement is like 54 or something so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I just went to the brew store that the suckers jammed in there and I am uh, just going to go ahead and dump in this. I just want some insurance. I 
don't want this thing to stall out or get incomplete fermentation or even, you know, what would be even worse is like if it ferments but has bad flavors. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, I'll get this the whole thing in there. This should definitely get going now with um, both the Urkel and this 3470, so hopefully it'll be okay. Thought I would just do a quick update. As you can see, we don't have airlock activity. However, we definitely have fermentation activity. It's definitely uh, really going along just fine right now, and it's down to a good temperature. Uh, middle of the recommended range. Now I know with these bubblers you can get a situation where you don't have a good seal. I have taken this thing off and on about three or four times, done the airlock, done the stopper. Um, I don't really understand where I'm getting a leak of air right now. Usually I do have plenty of bubbling in here so I'm just not quite sure what happened. I'm not worried about it, but it is a little peculiar. I know I can get a different type of a uh, insert lid on the top, like a tapered type thing that's supposed to be a better seal, but I've just not normally had too much problem with it. But at any rate, it is definitely fermenting. Um, so that's good, and it's at a good range. So I'll just keep an eye on it, and at some point I'll take a gravity reading and see when I need to bring it upstairs to warm up for a diacetyl rest. So, now, it's bubbling. Why is that? Well, I got to thinking about this lid, and I was thinking, I just don't see there being a leak in the stopper, and this lid or the airlock so I thought it's got to be around this ring so then I thought well, what if I put saran wrap in there so I took this thing off put a layer of saran wrap across the top screwed the thing back down cut a hole in the saran wrap and then put the thing down there and then now it's an airtight seal so that is a I guess a cheap hack for making this um, more airtight when you have a situation where you're pretty sure that it's actively fermenting but just not seeing the activity in the airlock. Okay, we are in the garage. You know, I guess, I don't know if this cup uh, allows it to see, but this if when I have this beer in a glass, it's pretty clear. It's fairly clear. You say my plastic ain't clear? I don't know. It does have these weird kind of waves. Dim, it's kind of yeah. dim in here too, but so the spear went from 1058 and it went down to 1010. As you I think saw, it had a rough start to the fermentation. It did not go as well as I had hoped. I don't know why. I made a starter. The yeast wasn't super old, but real quick. I did end up having some di diacetyl in this dumb beer, even though I brought it up before it was done fermenting. Room temp, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it was kegged and it was on tap and I did this one other time and I just didn't want to drink the whole keg with this flavor. So I made a yeast starter on a stir plate, brought the keg up, degassed it, warm room temp, dumped the starter in. A few days later, took a sample, flavor is gone. I mean, you can scrub it out. The yeast will do its job. So basically what I wanted to do with this beer was test this Zamba or Zamba hop blend. And that's another reason I wanted to get rid of that bad flavor because you just, it was covering mm -hmm. the hops. Now I do get some bitterness. There was another video or beer I made that was a uh, no boil hops. And Chip and I both agreed yeah. that we thought, well, that beer could probably just have a little more bitter. So I did do 0.75 ounce for bittering, and then two ounces of flame out for 15 minutes. It was down to 184. Then I did two more ounces for another 15 minutes. So I mean, it's kind of a lot of hops at the end. There's a lot of hops. You don't get the aroma that I would like. I don't get the aroma. 
But um, the nose is very pillsy. Yeah, it does have, it's mostly pills, 10 pounds of pills, half a pound of care pills, half a pound of Munich. That's my typical Hellas bill. I don't know why this thing got up to 10.58 for 11 pounds of grain. Um, maybe I kind of collected like more wort and probably boiled it some down. Maybe that was one way. I think one. it just really wanted to be an IPL. Mm -hmm. A Maybach IPL. I mean, it's... A MyPL. So, I've been pretty happy with all of these BSG hop blends. Yeah, I, he, he's, he's down too. Um, uh, I can't really pick a favorite. They're all just nice, and I think they accomplish what they're trying to do. Um, some of them do have, like the juicy mangoey peachy stuff and like a little bit of the pine thing mm -hmm. this one it's supposed to be a tropical dance explosion which is, I, I don't know what that means in Booty beer. Booty uh, but it all says pineapple mango stone fruits orange and tangerine i mostly get like this the bitterness of like a, a orange peel uh kind of a, i get more flavor than i do aroma from the way that this beer came out but I don't dislike the hot blends. Okay. I think they're I think they're a nice product, and I think if you want to, yeah, experiment with them. I mean, I think they're, you know, I mean, you can go, you can use your go-to hops, right? Like all of your favorite hops. You've pretty much used all of the blends minus Nobility, and they're always mm. they're hard to pinpoint a flavor. But I think maybe that's a point of the blend. Yeah. Possibly, that could be the point, but I think another point is to give you a, a wider variety of aromas and flavors than you get from like one hop. Yeah. You know, usually you don't brew a single hop beer. I mean, certainly you can and you do, but you know, a lot of times you're using you know a few different hops in a hoppy beer to get like a combination of. Yeah, off flavors camera. And maybe it's just because I've had a few in my box because we're in that season. Thank God, finally. Um, but it has a my Bucky foundation to it for sure with that malt bill and maybe probably even that strength a little bit but then it's like it's kind of like wow. I just said jokingly a minute ago it's like a my PL it's like but you would not have these like pineapple-y oh, right. stone fruit yeah. flavors in a my it would be kind of spicy or herbal I don't get the my nice. as much because I just drank five gallons of my my <laughs> and I'm well familiar with Bach? that of my Bach <laughs> not your Bach it's not your back. Um, so that one definitely had a sweeter uh, component than this. This is like True. a little like yeah. thinner. Um, but I mean, if you if but it I reminds you these, of it, then fine. I would say that these hops are not on their own unsweet as well because of the fruit that they kind of bring. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. I, I, I guess it's I not thought, dry. I think some of the other. I think like evergreen was maybe. Stood out a little more. I don't really remember Sequoia off the top of my head. I'd have to go look at my notes and my videos. No? no. I don't, don't agree. Negative. But, I don't know. This, the takeaway from this is these PSG hot blends are, I think they're solid. I mean, they're they're fun to use. Yeah. They give you, um, you know, they're going to give you a, a good result. They re recommend styles, but, you know, basically I think all the ones I've used and I haven't done the nobility is... Uh, more for hop forward type beers. I bought some nobility though, so that mm -hmm. we could try them if and when we want yeah. to. Before lager season escapes us, because yeah. it's clearly named, it's riffing on noble hop. Well, so but it's a blend of you noble could just hops make a, like, a a British bitter or something. And what? I guess so. Yeah. Hey, no, you're right. Or maybe I'm confusing noble hop. See, we've had this conversation before, where we confuse like English, yeah, and German, German. which are noble. Yeah. Maybe Noble Hops are like Fuggle EKG. I thought they were like Sots Hallertau. Yeah. Oh, have, man. We have had Comment below. No, don't, don't. <laughs> this is amateur hour. I mean, I don't know. But, yeah, I think that'll be it. Good. My bottoms will video. figure out where to put them. That's right. All right. All right. It's nap time. And upward. For at least one of us. It's not it's done. It's me. <laughs> All right. Say bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Catch you later. Bye-bye.